So a second ago, we just got all of our text appearing on the screen, which is super exciting. Um, really love that. It's really nice. Things are actually starting to have come together. It's pretty sweet. Um, but our biggest problem here is that we don't know who's sending which text message and we're not sure they're coming in the right order. So let's fix that. Uh, does anyone have an idea how they would fix that? Yeah, I think that would work, sure. Um, we could order it by the timestamp, and yes, we, we kind of had that here, down here before we got rid of it, but notice how we're stacking the, both of the lists together. Yeah, do you see that? Sent messages dot concat the received messages. So the received messages, all of the received messages are getting stacked at the end of all of the sent messages. Now, like I said, this is not the best way to do this. I'm just showing you a way to do this. Um, and so we'll need a better way in a bit. But this for the time being will work. How do we do it? Well, the first thing we should do is we should probably start getting rid of this right here. You might have also noticed, by the way, this timestamp. When we deal with timestamp, things are a little confusing. Remember how we used to get that error up here um, before we change this settings? Watch what happens if I get rid of this settings thing up here. If I save this and I run this, see this error that comes up? It says the behavior for data objects stored in Firebase or Firestore is going to change and your app may break. It actually gives you the prescription of what to do, just like this. So. We can fix all this goodness, um, but more importantly, a better way to deal with this is just to say, and you, all you say is like timestamps in snapshots true, and then you set the settings. Uh, for us, we just because we called the Firestore the database, you just I just copied it basically. It looks like this. Then just changed the word Firestore to database. So remember how that fixed that problem? We have one more problem we have to fix, and that's this one right here. So we're going to change this date, the new date dot to string, and we are going to call it something else. Instead of new date to string, we're going to use this funky thing called Firebase dot Firestore dot field value dot server <laughs> timestamp. I know that looks weird but it actually allows us to put a timestamp on the server that Firebase recognizes as an actual thing. So this is its own distinct data type that we can use in our application and allow us to sort our data more nicely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to delete all of these messages in the database. And to do that, I click that little button right there and I say delete all documents. Now it's going to be really sad because they all disappear. But when you do that, it'll tell you, this will permanently delete all the data, sadness, delete it all. And you could go in and manually change all of those things, but I wouldn't do that. That sounds silly. So instead, delete them all, look at how the messages collection disappears, and then let's make a bunch of new ones. Refresh, all these messages should be gone. Come in here. Hey there. Hello. Hi. Howdy. Hola, ciao, hey Josue, you're in my database. And so I can come in, I can mess around a little bit, and sign in some other applications, sign in some other accounts, send some messages, and it should have an entirely new data type under the field for timestamp. And so we just go in here, hey me, Oh, look, and they're appearing. Hello there. Josue. That's lots of hello. That's a lot of hellos. Yay. All right. So we've seen we've now just added a bunch more messages back to our database, which when we refresh this should look nice. And let's actually take a look at what that data type is, because that's the important part here. In this case, this timestamp, when you scroll over it, it should say timestamp, and it does. And so there's a bunch of things you can do with that. And you'll notice that the Firebase error, oh, it's gone. Well, if you bring that error back, it'll tell you how to handle bringing it back to a date, but that's not actually what we want. 
Instead, what we want to do is we want to take all of these messages that we're getting and we want to sort them. So we're going to go to all messages right here and we are going to say dot sort um, and we're going to say message one and message two. And the way you use a callback function for sorting is you can do it like this. You can just return message one dot timestamp minus message two dot timestamp. And that should sort them in descending order. Now you'll notice, by the way, each of these timestamps comes back as an object with seconds and nanoseconds. We are probably not going to need nanoseconds. So I'm just going to say timestamp.seconds minus m2.timestamp.seconds. And so the way this works is if it returns negative 1, this will go. If it returns 1, this will go. So there's the other way to do this is if uh, you don't have a timestamp, for instance, m1 doesn't have a timestamp, then you can just return, just return one. So push this guy in front. And if M2 doesn't have a timestamp, you can return negative one to reverse the order. And so that's, that's a pretty simple sorting function that will handle most of the ordering for us. But what we still haven't handled is even though we pass every message to the insert message into UI function, we don't know which one is the sender and which one is the user. So I think we probably gonna need two things. Um, I wanna give you a hint and I wanna see if you can do it yourself. And so what you're gonna do is the first thing is we have this ID and name here. Have you noticed that? We also have the current user ID. Now there's a bunch of ways to do this, but let's take the current user ID and also pass it into this message each time. I mean, into this insert message into UI function each time. And if you do that, you're going to need to add another parameter here, current user ID, and then see if you can write that function now. Um, we're gonna write, write some CSS for it in a second, but see if you can write it so that you can distinguish between two different messages, one for the recipient, and one for the user. Um, and we'll come back in the next video and we will talk about the answer.